watching Kenosha Community Television. Lake here in Wisconsin. Uh, we're with Captain Ken again from Albatross Fishing Charters, except this time we're doing some ice fishing. So uh, we're going to get some fish right. here, right? That's Good, what deal. About. Good deal. A beautiful day out you here. Got, you got a couple holes drilled here. You can pull this over to Shanty Overhold. Or... Uh, All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to get started. We're going to have some fun. So let's get this show rolling. I'm Dean Romano, and it's time for Outdoor Wild. Come right in, don't have to pretend, bring your family, bring your friends, it's Outdoor Wild, come in and sit right down, hope you're gonna stick around, pick you up if you're feeling down, at Outdoor Wild, you can learn with style, mile after mile. Outdoor Wild At Outdoor Jesse and Hannah, this is uh, uh Jason. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is Jason's uh, uh spouse and his daughter and doing a little ice fishing and uh, how long have you been out here? You ain't been out here very long. Right? Nope, just put the pole in the water. Yeah, okay. So it'll be a while, but we'll see what happens. We're working on it. We're hoping to get some fish here today. Yeah, we will. We, we will. will. <laughs> yeah. And when that comes out, we gotta have that camera rolling. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, let's let's get going here. Let's see what's happening with the captain. I'll, I'll, I'll take over here and get this stuff put in there where it keeps it warm. So, what are you planning on catching here today? Hoping for anyway. Uh, you know, yesterday we did a test here. We did really good with the bluegills. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some larger ones up to nine inches. Right. You know, not a whole lot of them, but you had sure. to sort through them. But we had some action. And uh, we had some bass action. Good. And uh, some northerns. And uh, it's been it's been good. So, right. uh, you know, again, it's just, it is what you make of it. I, right. I you know, yeah, uh, every day you're not going to come out and get your limit, you know, but if whatever you get, you know, make the best of it and sure. have, have fun, you know. Right, exactly, exactly. It's, uh, you know, it's, we're fishing about, uh, about six foot of water today here, right on the edge of a weed line here, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there, we'll see what we got going. The best, I've been using, uh, been using uh, red spikes okay. and uh, weed worms. Okay. Uh, you can use a, uh, use a uh, plastic tail too if you like. Right. Uh, uh, I've been just using what I call the uh, popper, popper jig. Okay. Just kind of like, you'll see the angle, I'll show you the camera right. later on here. And that, then I put uh, one one white uh, worm on it, one red worm, and uh, I should say spike, and it go from there. All right. Well, we'll be, uh, we'll be taking a look at some of, uh, Ken will show us a little bit of ta uh, bait and tackle and whatever, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take a little bit of a look at that and we'll see what's happening here with the fish. We'll give it a heck of a try today. Oh, look like we'll need this, this half. Okay. 
we had camp, huh? Worm on well, not, uh, yeah. A uh, weed worm? A weed worm, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh... Then I put a little red spike that took a little bit more, tipped the hook just a little bit. Okay. And it se seemed like it's been a good combination. Right. Uh... What I do is I just get it so it covers the end of the hook there, if possible. And sweep this way. It would. Sure. Okay. And then we're about five, six feet deep here, so see when you hit bottom there? Yeah. And then uh, when, it, when you're fishing without a bobber like this, right. what you want to do is when you get it down to where it's uh, the line is tight, when it okay. hits the bottom, you'll see it'll, it'll come up solid there. Sure. And then just fish your jig up. Move it around a bit. Yeah. Try to get some action going. And what I got is I got a little secret I do. Uh -huh. See a little uh, knot there in the line there? Right. So sometimes I do that. Just gives me a bearing. Oh, I see. Where I'm saying. at on the on the line going down. Oh, pull that up a little bit, Ken. So I just do a little. He's got a little knot here yeah. going, is what he's saying. He ties yeah. it, so it just yeah, it, it's better for the line. I use it for like like a marker where I'm at. Okay. In the bottom there, so that not, I'm. It takes a little bit of my guesswork away here. So you oh, can okay. see the line is bottom the bottom there now. I see. And then I just bring it above the bottom. Okay. Where the line will go straight. Oh, I see. So you can see where that mark is when you yeah. pull that up. That's what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Then I know that that's near the bottom there. Okay. Now for me here, Ken, my, my little, uh, this is just a little uh, jig with a, uh, what do we got, a little pink pink eye, is that what they call that on Yeah, there? like a glow white yeah. with a pink eye there. Sure. And, uh, and that's just, uh, I mean, I can try one of the holes with just this on, we'll see what happens. No, no, I got here, here's the, here's the worms. You want to oh, tip, tip, tip it. Yeah, you want to definitely tip them. You definitely want to tip it here. Okay. Ken just had a bite here. Let's, let's see what happens here. Little nibble going. It was more than nibble. It hit was it? Good. Yeah. Did it? Did it hit it good? Yeah, it hit it good here. Well, you might want to throw that back in there. And now, uh, what? Just a reminder for the viewers there. Are you, oh, is, is, yeah. are you on there? Uh, just want to let you know that what I do is I have this orange line so I can see it, but then I put like two pound test clear clear line, about a two foot, eighteen inch, to twenty four inch uh, leader on the end of there, so that way. Uh, That way the fish don't see that orange line. All right, here, I'll take these gloves off and we'll get this rigged up here. Sorry. And sometimes it'll be just, the line will go off to the side a little bit. Sometimes it'll be, and I'll give you some more different. Yeah. Whatever we're working with. And if you find a better spot, I'll move around let you guys fish in here. Well, you had a oh, little. There's a bite on the bite. bite there's he's, something's happening here. There he's you go. got yeah. one. He's got one. Coming up to the nice ice. Nice little gill. Nice yeah, gill there. there. we go. About six and a half, seven sure. inches there. Nice little gill there. These are good eating too. Yeah, yeah. Tell you. Well, uh, those yeah, size we might keep these a few guys? for uh, lunch here. Huh? Those, those size we might keep a few for lunch sure, if you want. Sure. And then, uh, but then anything smaller than that, you want to put practice, back, practice, yeah. practice, catch, catch and release there. Right, right. A little catch and release is not wrong with that. No. You want me to unhook this guy for you? Yeah, we'll get that unhooked in there. Okay. Good deal. And uh, ni nice thing about this, folks, is anybody that ever wants to practice catch and release, well, you know, there's no harm done here. Usually, a lot of these hooks are usually through the lips, pretty much. Yeah. I'd have to say, now like, we can easily put him back, or we can keep him. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good eater right there. We'll, we'll, keep we'll, we'll keep a few. We'll keep a few. And uh, a little bit of a flavor. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have lunch. We'll cook lunch for you guys. To get back to the house in Camp Lake there. And for all those folks that worry about that, that don't understand ice fishing or sports, and may have concern on some of this. There's a lot of these guys around here in Wisconsin. We, we do real well with the bluegill here. There's no uh, no no harm in, in uh, to the bluegill here in this state uh, that I know of, that I'm aware of. And uh, actually, I'm going to say, and I know I might, might be speaking that you know out of turn there, but a little bit. But uh, actually, it's good to like prop get a few of those out. We yes. throw some of those out. Absolutely. Uh, you get too many of them in an the area, then they get stunted, what they call it, mm. and uh, they don't they won't grow. Yep. And no, we don't have enough food source. Well, we have buckets so, here and stuff. So yep, let's get a bucket here and we'll get that one in there. We'll get uh, we'll get the camera guy catching some fish. Yeah, the camera guy. Well, my Kyle here, he's got to do some fishing. <laughs> we'll get him going here. Boy, you got a nice heat lamp here. It's melting my arm. We'll just throw the bucket right out here. And we'll yeah. Let's right we'll throw him for the bucket. Make a little gill there. All right. Good All deal. Right. Good and, deal. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, let's do... Uh, I want to mention too is we got Captain Ken here. Uh, also, you do some pheasant guiding. Yeah, actually, that was been good. I got a Springer Spaniel. It's yeah. out by uh, 
I go by Ball and Recreation Area, which okay. is in Dodge County. Okay. And I also do uh, uh, some guiding out by a, a pheasant game farm there out in Whitewater called Dark Acres Game Farm there. Good deal. And so then uh, also, too, after that's done in March, I'm looking forward to getting this, uh, into some uh, perch fishing at Lake Michigan there with our charter service. Back to the side. So you're, yep. you're a regular year-round guy then. Oh, yeah. I keep busy all year round. All right. Except so if that. people want to get in touch with you to do some fishing or hunting or, yeah, they just do They something. can look us up on our website, albatrossfishingcharters.com. They, they can get a hold of you from there. Yep. Sure good, can. Good, good. So yep. you can go to albatrossfishingcharters.com and if you, it's a pheasant hunt you want, he'll hook you up there too. So. Yeah, it's been great. Sounds good. Let's get some back to some more fishing. I'll get a little right. bit more organized here, and we'll. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my cameraman a break there. I'm going to film right. for a while. Let good you job. let you set him up, and we'll see if we can't get some fishing action going. Try here. something. Over here, when you're fishing depths here, and you got a level that's working out the bottom there, I tie a little. You know, we're not fishing huge fish here. Most times, you don't want to have a knot in your line because it'll break. Right. When you're fishing these bluegills here, though, I call it a cheer line because I know how far off the bottom I am, approximately. Uh. And uh. It, it gives me an idea, a reference point of how far down I'm fishing right away without having to pull my line up and go and let it down to the bottom all the time. You can if you don't want to do that, all you do is let it down to the bottom until it stops going down. There. You know, it stopped, the line stopped there, it stops going down. Then you just bring it up a couple inches and you can jig your way up to the up farther there. there but it go. just gives me a reference point. I see. So you're playing this gives you so you think playing out the bottom, yeah, that that's a good idea, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you can bring it up to that level, then I know I'm about 60 inches above the bottom and I can let it back down to the sure. bottom at least I know my reference point is and the last fish we caught we caught it right at the marker there right it's just an idea you don't know like I say again it's just one of the ideas I like using yeah that's pretty nice and two uh and you can tell if you want to fish an inch, inch or two down deeper you put the knot a little bit deeper down right but if you're fishing game fish like walleyes or something like that or northerns with the with the, the rods there uh, you don't want to have you don't want to have least amount of knots in the line as possible. So you don't want to okay. you don't want to snap the line at that. That's where you're going to snap the line at the knot there. All right. We do want to thank. Uh, we are out here on Lake Delavan in Wisconsin here. We definitely want to thank uh, Gander Mountain up there for uh, some of the the local Gander Mountain here in Kenosha, uh, Joe there for taking care of us a little bit and uh, helping us out for uh, doing a putting out a good show here. And we're going to talk with uh, his buddy for a minute, see how he's doing. And, uh, I think she's got one on right now. She does right. look at the size oh, of that one. Nice one. Nice crab. Let's get that one. What do we got? A nice, that's a nice one. Yeah. It is just good to pull the nice crab up through the ice. Nice, nice one there. Yeah, we saw I saw that pole bending over. I said, yeah, I better get over. Oh, and you're using uh, uh this, this using a rubber regular, worm. Yeah. What are you using on there? Uh, I got a little rubber worm with a, uh, a red worm. spike at the end. Red spike. Those red spikes seem to be uh they seem to be hitting on them. Yeah, that's a nice, nice uh Nice fillet there. Keep that one. <laughs> you bet. All right. I'm going to get it back in the water. <laughs> All right. We'll inter introduce Jason here. How's it been going for y'all here so far? I don't know. He made it in the water yet. Okay. How about, have you been out this year at all? Or? Yeah, the last couple of days. How was that? Thursday this is the guy we just want to catch a fish this year. This yeah. guy knows his spots. Yeah, out. Good. He's the real pro here. All right. Yeah. Thursday night was good. Good. Uh, I got out here playing all right for dark. Yeah. And then uh, yesterday, me and Kenny were out. Sure. Got a few, but kind of slowed down towards the afternoon. Yeah. I hope oh. this front come through. Well, well, we'll see what yeah, we, got, we do have a little bit of a front coming in. Uh, actually, it almost looks like a small whiteout out there. Yeah, yeah, the trees are all frozen. Yeah. We've been doing, her and I have been doing good on these rubber tails. And good. Little wedges good. with regular cheese and then, of course. Good. The bread and spikes. Well, the folks, the folks can do that in their area too. They don't have to necessarily travel, you know. As long oh, yeah. as they, they kind of got an idea of. Uh, so we've got a couple of tips. Is this your tip of sitting on no, here? No, that's a. Uh, oh, okay. That's there. Okay. Uh, we just put a couple of them. We'll get more out of it. Some sure. This is one of the little spots where you can't really burn up a lot of ice. You know, yeah. there's going to be a lot of guys out here. Oh once yeah. Once it gets cold. So yeah. We'll try to see what we can do. Yeah. It's going to be hard to catch. I mean, right now we pulled two already here. Oh, yeah. Them and, and you guys. So, you know, we'll get what we can out of the camera here. But move it around a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll be moving. We'll be All right. All right. Yeah. Mind if I say hi to you here? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Got it? Mm -hmm. uh, this is Hannah. This is uh, Jason's daughter. And uh, she's inside the, the uh, shanty here doing a little fishing. How's it going? Did you catch anything yet? Or? No. Not yet. Okay, well, keep trying. You use the red worm too. Are you? 
and try a little jigging once in a while. Maybe a little jigging action. Might might get something on there. All right. Well, we'll be we'll be visiting with you here as we we uh, tape the show. So, okay. Let's go ahead and see how Captain Ken's doing it. Get some more rods going here too. And what I'll do is I'll set up one of these holes in here too with a we got some uh flathead minnows here and I'll set up one of these poles on a minnow on it. In case we get some big crappies here, we'll put a, a simple I got with this little red hooks, I've been having luck with red hooks, uh even with salmon and uh uh, the crappies and northern share with even red treble hooks. Uh, I don't know if it's just uh, resembles the color red uh, blood or something like a wounded fish or something there, but it's been it's been really good uh, using those red hooks. Those slight differences can sometimes make a difference of getting some fish and not getting some fish. What do you got there, Kyle? A little gill? Looks like bluegill. Yeah. He's got a small one here, Ken. Oh, he's out there. Yeah, I think that's a that one. We're gonna have to put him back. Oh yeah. Okay. A little catch and release there. All right. Yeah, Dullivan here, Wisconsin here, it's, uh, this lake is also known for some really good sized northerns. Uh, you know, good, you know, 30 plus northerns. And Dullivan Lake also, too, they, they have to be 30 inches to keep them, so to be legal, legal size northern. Uh, and the muskies are 40 inch. So, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm going to set some tip ups here. And what we're going to be using, uh, right now, we're going to be using some medium sized roaches. And uh, if we catch a small, crappie or something like that which is their favorite thing to eat is like small crappies you can throw a small crappie on there too so but we'll just try this first and we'll go from there all right excellent you can see the wire there Good size you're going to use anything from a medium sized roach to a, uh, you know, can even use guys use small suckers or smelt. I just hook them right underneath the dorsal fin there. And we're going to just put this one here about, I would say, just. No one will hit up, so we're just going like, to run this one about three or four feet here, so go from there. Yeah. 
later on we'll come back here every every uh hour i suggest checking your tip ups here in case the thing got into some weeds or something like that so they'll try that hole too there so What'd you get, Hannah? Bluegill. Yeah. Got yourself a bluegill? It's a nice one. It's a nice gill. It's kind of small and it's kind of big. Oh, I think that'll work. What do you think, Dad? That'll work, huh? Oh, yeah, that'll work. It's all That's the ticket, huh? Walk away from it and leave it sit. <laughs> That uh, young girl there get a uh, nice bluegill there too, or yeah, what? yeah, nice uh, gill. Excellent, excellent. Get that tangle out of here first. Good thing I checked that. Tangle here. Use uh, use, use Dacron line. You can use fire line. Ah. Thicker lines that don't keep cut on the ice when you have the the northern there, bigger game fish. Oh, actually, we got a good size crappie to put on here. Put them bait. I'll try that. And I do recommend fishing these uh, game, uh, northerns here. Uh, <coughs> do recommend using a leader, steel leader. Their, their teeth are really razor sharp. Just keep in mind when you're using those type of fish here, these uh, hand fish, they have to come out of the same lake there. So if you catch them, you can use them as bait there. So. <clears throat> Excellent. And what the, this tip up does is when it when it hits that spool, it'll come around like this here, and it'll tip off the tip as it runs out. It'll pull that spool and it'll tip off the tip up. That's the flag. They call it a flag. Then you'll know, then you got the uh, fish yet there. Excellent. Try our luck with those. Well, nowadays, uh, these, this is a ice fishing shack by Frable here. You can get those at Gander Mountain, uh, stuff like that. Uh, now, as we're growing up, you didn't have anything like this. We had, you didn't have these nice portable shacks like this. So it, you definitely had the rough weather out when you had rough weather. So we're really fortunate now to have some equipment, fishing equipment like this here now. So it makes it uh, fishing a lot more comfortable. I call it uh, ice fishing in the tropics when you get a ice fishing shack like this here. <laughs> so, but that's really helpful to keep your hands get warmed up here. That's that's the key. So dress dress accordingly when you go ice fishing. 
not come. That is two for me. So you're at your uh, you you your uh, charter is out of Kenosha. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We used to go out of Racine. Uh, with a Z. Uh, it's been probably seven, eight years. They go out every year. Got yourself a keeper, Kyle. It's a nice one. This is what you want here. It's good, good thick ice like this. You can see how thick that ice is. We're in uh, late okay. yeah, January here in Wisconsin, and uh, this is okay. my second time out, so. I'm real cautious when it comes to uh, ice. You want to be sure it's good and frozen and solid. Kyle's had a little action here today. Alright, it's it's slowed slowed down a little bit here, uh, you know, which which isn't uncommon when you're ice fishing. Uh, that nice little spurt there going for a bit, you know, as a few fish being pulled up through the ice and uh, we're gonna try a little bit more here, see what happens. Uh, one thing I do wanna point out uh, that was mentioned to me here and I kind of forgot about it, it's, it's a good point. You know, when you come out to places like this, try to leave the areas clean. Uh, you know, don't throw your garbage all over that kind of thing because you'll spoil it for your for your own self and uh, You want to have a good nice time catch. doing this stuff. You certainly don't want to Oh, I think we got one here. I think Captain, or, well we yeah. call him Captain Ken. Ken Bronze, he is the captain of the Albatross fishing tiger. Caught one here, so let's see what he's got. What do you got there, Ken? There all right, nice we got a nice little gill. All right. Nice gill there. Yeah. So. I just tell the people to slow down a little bit, but you did pick one out of there. Yeah, it's, uh, you got to work on this thing. We're going to this one really hard. It's about a six and a half, seven inch gill there. Yeah. It's nice, nice, just right for you in there, so. Well, we're definitely going to, uh, I think we'll do a little moving around out there and see what's going on, but. Uh, yeah, hey, it's get warmed up. It's definitely cooler than it's supposed to, it was supposed to be, so we'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, the temperatures have cooled down out here a bit, so. Uh, you know, it's not, I mean, they were predicting a little warmer, and then we got a little bit of a breeze out here that picked up. All right, anyway, we'll uh, we'll keep trying and see how it goes. So good luck ice fishing, enjoy yourself. Okay, this is a hole that we just drilled a little bit ago, and you can see it's pretty iced up, so that's, uh, the temperatures are a little bit different than they uh, were predicting, but, you know, we're getting through it okay. Okay, we got a flag up here. This could be good. Not on there? Darn! All right, uh, okay, here's the deal. The tip up went up. Uh, it, obviously, there was nothing on there. You saw we pulled up, we're trying again. But the fishing has slowed way down, way down now. And, uh, but a little bit different things going on here. There's the winds have picked up. Uh, it's, it's cooled down a bit. You know, we may come back out later. I'm not sure, but at this point in time, we're gonna probably call this a wrap. We got a few fish on video here to show you. Uh, this is the, the crappie that Jesse pulled up. It's got some nice size to it, you know. I mean, it's not a real dinker there. I mean, we got a little bit of a fillet there, and. It's, some nice gills, six inch gills Kyle caught and uh, Ken and uh, it, it, went, it went well. I mean, we can't complain. We, we, got, we got a few fish and uh, that's definitely the main thing. So bottom line is uh, you decide to go out ice fishing. Remember, you're, you're out to have a good time. Of course, if you're fishing a tournament, that's another story and we're not doing that. At least not today, we're not. All right, until next time, I'm Dean Romano with Ken Bruns, and uh, we hope to, you'll join us on the next Outdoor Wild. All right. Forgot Chef Ken Bruns. Chef Ken Bruns. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Slash and Fish Cleaner. Captain Slash. Yeah, and Fish Cleaner. <laughs> fish Cleaner. <laughs>